It's time for Windows Weekly. Uh, Paul Theratz here. Mary Jo Foley's back. We anoint her as our official Enterprise correspondent for Windows Weekly. She even has an Enterprise Pick of the Week and a look at the Gmail. Man. It's all coming up next. Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley, episode 219, recorded July 28th, 2011. The Gmail Man. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Gazelle, the easy way to sell or recycle your used gadgets, and Newegg.com, the place on the internet to shop for tech. Gazelle it today and receive a gift card from Newegg at Newegg.com slash trade. And by GoToAssist Express. If you provide technical support to clients, colleagues, friends, or family, do it easily and without being there in person with GoToAssist Express. For a free 30-day trial, visit GoToAssist.com slash Windows. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to Netflix.com slash twit. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers all your Microsoft needs. That we've got a we've got a duo, the dynamic duo, the Redmonians. With Mary Jo Foley from uh, uh, AllThingsMicrosoft.com at ZDNet. Hi, Mary Jo. Great to have you back. Hi. See, thanks. I can look over at you now. I can say, hi, Mary Jo. You can. I can. I can look deep into your eyes. This is good. I like it. And, uh, and to my right, your left, Mr. Paul Therott of, uh, Hello. of uh, the Supersite for Windows, WinSupersite.com, Windows IT Pro, and the author of the great Windows Phone Secrets, among others. Hey, Paul. You guys sweltering oh, still, or did, or did uh, you guys, the East Coast, get cooled off a little bit? It's a lot less hot. <laughs> it's, it's still, yeah. it's still, you it's know. Not, it's not triple hot. digits anymore, though. No. Oh, man. I don't know. No. That. I don't know how you did that. Wow. So we're in our new studio. I think you might notice this looks slightly different. Yeah, slightly. It's a little bit. Mm -hmm. How do you like it? I likened it to the Emperor's Throne Room in Star Wars. I love it. <laughs> I am now Dr. <laughs> Evil. If I spin this around, it's, this chair has aircraft aluminum on the back. So. Yeah. Actually, oh, uh -oh. <laughs> it also reminds okay. me of the game Bioshock, if you ever played that. It you is know, a little Bioshock. Undersea well, we're going, we actually, of... we're going for Captain Nemo. So you're, you, yeah, you're right. You, you hit okay. the nail on the yeah. head. It's exactly what it is. Um, but we're, we're, we're still working. We, uh, in the words of Google, this is a field trial. So if, you, <laughs> if you're watching the show and you, you hear us going through all sorts of machinations in between shows and so forth, it's because we're still really working to get this, uh, all the details uh, and all the kinks worked out. But, uh, so I appreciate your patience, uh, folks at home. Web, well, we're going to get into 2.19, and we'll start with Mango, which is now final, Paul Therott. That's what they say. Ahead of schedule. <laughs> Although. It's not true? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I say. Um, yeah, you know, the, the, the controversy here for me was simply that, you know, I've been told all along that the schedule this year for Mango would map to the schedule last year for the first version of Windows 7. You know, that w meaning that we would see a launch event roughly around the October time frame. And, you know, for that to happen, that Mango would have to RTM by sometime in, you know, late August or September. So the... The July RTM was actually very surprising for me, um, mostly because, you know, I, I, I didn't get this information from Bob over in the corner, but, you know, from a friend of mine who works at Microsoft, you know. Um, Bob so might I have known like a better, little bit actually. Of it. Bob, uh, you know, maybe I would have. Uh, you should ask Bob. <laughs> except that, you know, I, I saw something in the description that Microsoft had today about this release that made me wonder if, or, or maybe maybe uh, think that this explains what, what the difference was, which was simply that Microsoft's part of Windows Phone Mango, Windows Phone 7.5, is done. But that's the they just that's how they described it. They said our our piece of it is done, but the piece that's contributed by the handset makers and by the wireless carriers is not done, and that that's still to come, and that the 
RC version of the developer tools won't see the light of day until the end of August, which I had also heard before. You know, Wait mapping to what I thought was the release of the phone. But they're shipping Mango in Japan, but developers won't get no, anything. No, 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 no. They're no, not. They're not. So they, what they've done is they, they've completed Mango. Okay. They've given it now to their partners, but their partners have to contribute code to it, too, before oh. it can ship on phones. Oh, okay. So that's going to happen over the next couple of months. What so does that mean? What kind still... of code do partners contribute? Is it just like having the AT&T My Phone app on there, or is it more than just that? I think it's more than just that. I mean, obviously, in the past with Windows Phone, I'm sorry, with Windows Mobile, uh, these partners were responsible for low-level drivers, you know, and things of that nature. And I don't think it's that level of thing for the most part. But I do think it's going to be things like, um, you know, hotspot, wireless hotspot. You know, the ability to share a connection. Oh, that you know, makes that sense. Because everybody has a different. This is, uh, Rules on and that. this is something that different carriers may or may not do. Obviously, they're going to want to charge extra for it. And they're going to have to have all that stuff in there. So, I, I think we're still looking at the same rough schedule um, going forward, which is that uh, it would probably be October at the soonest before we see a real launch. And then devices will probably dribble in over time, like they did last time as well. But so, what the thing in Japan is not uh, is just they're showing a, a win. Oh, by the way, it's not Mango; it's Windows Phone. 7.5. 7.5, yeah. 7.5. Even though, sort of. yeah, I know, even though <laughs> the, so the software itself is actually Windows Phone 7.1. Right. Can you believe this? Okay, this, this is just craziness, right? The operating system is Windows Phone OS 7.1, but the handsets are going to be called Windows Phone 7.5. Who Just see, to keep it really confusing. The people who see 7.5 are the people in the stores, right, buying yep. a phone. The right. people who see 7.1 are developers, people like you guys. Yep. So mm -hmm. that's why. They're, or if <laughs> you why. have a problem well, with your phone, don't yeah, like yeah. doesn't somebody say to you, what version are you running? Oh. And you think it's 7.5, but it's really 7.1. But that's okay because the, the, uh, then people will translate in their head. They'll say, oh, you mean 7.1. I, I think I... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd like to quote Paul Thorat yes. on something he said this week oh, when, okay. when this that came guy, out. I don't said, trust him Because uh, <laughs> Microsoft said to me, it's not an ideal pairing. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. And Paul said, Paul said, just like Merlot and fish. <laughs> right. It's a fine, so the, a fine peanut butter and tuna fish it's sandwich. It's a fine pairing. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, there's some precedent to this, right? Windows 7 is, of course, Windows version 6.1. Right. Um, you know, some people will argue that, you know, this doesn't really matter. But I, I think the thing that bothers me about this is simply that they could have fixed it easily. I, you know, it's not it... like Windows on the desktop where there's a compatibility issue where you could say, look, we didn't want to change all these internal things because, you know, developers rely on those version numbers for code compatibility. But there is no backwards code compatibility on Windows Phone. This is a brand new system. So I, I, I don't know. You know, Control-H, Global Search and Replace... No, too simple. I mean, I just don't understand. Saying Microsoft has uh, is challenged with its numbering system is, I mean, it's it's like saying yeah, Salvador yeah, yeah. Dali's paintings are a little odd. It's just that's what. Yes, of course. <laughs> I mean, he's, yes, sure. that's what. But they always do this. They always are strange. Yeah, numbering. Yep. I think you're. I think you're tilting at windmills. Little little bit of little bit of fun here. <laughs> one, so. yeah. But as far as the the Japan phones go, I, my understanding is that this phone, which I think is like Fujitsu Toshiba, I, I believe the way they're billing it is that when it ships, it will be the first Windows phone to market. But they're not saying when that's going to be. Mm. <laughs> so uh, possibly September, or possibly later. I, I don't I, because I don't think they know. I don't think they know when they'll actually be able to release it. And it may not even be the first Windows phone to market, but I think they were trying to get a little bit of pre-release excitement there or whatever. So we shall see. I'd, I'd kind of like to see a launch this year where everyone got phones at the same time, um, you know, unlike last year where they launched in Europe and then a few you know weeks later they launched in the U.S. I'd like to see something more along the lines of a, you know, a single global launch. Well, the, so the, the uh, U.S. handsets won't look like the Japanese handsets, or will they? Will they well, that particular to... handset, I believe, is only going to be sold in Japan, but, of course, the phones themselves are all going to look but yeah, but, you know, but, fairly but, but, similar. And Japan uses cell phones very differently. A lot of Japanese people, that's their computer. They don't have uh, mm -hmm. phones, mm -hmm. per se. Um, yep. I haven't seen a Japanese version of Windows Phone 7, but you say it's the same UI and everything? I wonder how well accepted yeah, that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, that's a good question. 
Yeah. Do does they, it have a slide out full keyboard for that type of thing? Right. Does it have emojis? It is waterproof. It is waterproof. It's <laughs> really? waterproof, and it comes in pink and yellow. Okay, too. so there's some concession to the Japanese market because I know they like to sweat in color. <laughs> That's right, right. The, yeah. there are, the cartoon characters are available <laughs> for manga. stickers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting, huh? Yeah. How do you know how well Windows Phone has uh, has has done in Japan? Is there any? Uh, I don't any know anything about Japan. That? I'm not even sure if it is available in Japan. This might be the <laughs> first. I'm not, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We don't really know how well it's done here either. That's we, true. We, we do Good have point. a bit uh, somewhere later in the notes that there's a U.S. smartphone market share uh, thing from Nielsen. Yeah. And this actually isn't in the notes, but according to Nielsen, uh, Windows Phone plus Windows Mobile, it's actually, it's actually usage share, right? Not market share. I should have uh, written it that way. Uh, according to them, Windows Phones, which is Windows Phone plus Windows Mobile, is about 9%. Wow, that's pretty big. That's actually pretty good. I'm I mean, surprised. When you consider that's that, huge. Yeah, so iPhone is 28%. Uh, Windows Phone is about a third of that. And I think a lot of that is probably legacy Windows it's Mobile not, devices. It's Windows, not Windows Phone in 7. It's, it's 6.5. Six, six, not necessarily. I think it's yeah. all of it together. Yeah. But it's still not... It's still not horrible. So um, this is usage like they measure browsers and so forth, that kind of thing. Not not how many, not how many not units sold, but actual right. They're right. looking at some kind of traffic, you know, probably. Uh, yeah, uh, right. So Android is thirty nine percent up from twenty nine percent half a year ago. Yeah, yep. Thirty nine percent iOS twenty eight percent RIM down from twenty seven to twenty, and Windows ten yeah. percent. 10%, almost 9%. Almost 10%. Um, HP WebOS is 2%. Symbian is only 2%. Of course, we're not very big Symbian users here in the U.S. Right. Um, the, one thing I would just say, I mean, I, I, unfortunately, the chart I had didn't come through in the email. Um, but uh, Apple went up one percentage point over the past year. Obviously, Google went up dramatically. But when you break down the Google handset vendors and you look at you know Microsoft, the total 9%, where does that fall? You know, They're actually above Samsung. And they're with on Android, and they're within shutting distance of Motorola, which is 11 percent. Um, and of course, the Motorola dro uh, Droid line is very popular, and the Samsung Android phones are very popular. So, you know, Windows Phone as a whole is not it's not horrible. Um, obviously, we could need to get more people on the new system than the old, but it's not it's not the complete lost cause that I think a lot of people no 10 percent believe it. Nine percent is very uh, respectable. I mean, it's not like HP is going to fold their tent at 2%. Maybe they are. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <clears throat> Maybe they are. <laughs> Maybe so uh, I want to talk a little bit. We're going to take a break. I want to talk a little bit about Bing. Boy, I've heard everybody uh, should buy Bing from Apple to Rupert Murdoch uh, to Google. So um, <clears throat> I don't think any – I don't think – is Bing for sale? We'll find out. Paul Therod is here, Mary Jo Foley. Should we anoint Mary Jo Foley now officially – as your co-host, Paul, should we just make that official? Let's just make that official. Well, I, we ha we should ask her. Um, <laughs> I would like to. <laughs> yes, I would I, like I, to ask I, you officially, okay. Mary Jo Foley, will you marry Paul and me? <laughs> wow. No. <laughs> Damn you, Leo. <laughs> okay, maybe she wasn't ready, Paul. I'm sorry. I thought. I I don't know. Oh God, I've been working toward no. this for so long. <laughs> How would no, you like to join to us every uh, every every? All, you only have to marry us for ninety minutes every Thursday. How about that? <laughs> I think that's acceptable. We'd love to have you because Mary Jo is really such a great Microsoft Thanks. observer. And as you know, Paul, um, she, yes. how much I love enterprise computing, and she really knows enterprise computing. I feel it really it's <laughs> like that commercial where the you know the the guy with the peanut butter and the guy in the chocolate. You know the things get mixed You've got up. Peanut butter in my chocolate. You've got Enterprise in my consumer podcast. <laughs> no, we need to cover it. In fact, we worked for a while with Mary Jo on doing an Enterprise uh, podcast, which she really wanted to do, and we uh, dropped the ball mm -hmm. on that because we just got so busy. But uh, this can be the uh, the joint Windows Enterprise podcast. So just every once in a while, throw you in mean something. we could talk about System Center? Right, let's not get crazy. Let's not get crazy. 
Step, yeah. a, step away from the data <laughs> well, center. You know, if we do, though, I'm going to move this show over to the other room, other pillow, where I have a pillow. So it'll be okay. I'll have a, I'll have a very uh, nice set we'll where make, I can... We'll make enterprise fun, Leo. We'll bring yeah. sexy back to System Center. Yikes. Was se- I'm sorry. Was it, uh, sexy part of System Center? Or was it... Yes. <laughs> you have an obviously have a sexy that was extension. something I got lost on yes. the way to the cloud. If you only had that, you would, you would know. It was a, it was a management add-on pack of some kind. I, wanna, I actually want to welcome a, a brand new... Uh, advertiser uh, to mm-hmm. the show in conjunction with our good friends at Gazelle. We've talked about Gazelle before. Gazelle is uh, that great place where you can take your old and used gadgets and get them uh, refreshed, refurbished by selling them <laughs> for a very good price. And now we've got a very Needless. special partnership. If you go to Newegg.com, I've loved Newegg. We've used, we use Newegg uh, almost exclusively to buy our PC stuff. Um, you know all the all the stuff that we do. You can now trade in your electronics when you sell on Gazelle for a new egg gift card. So they've had other gift cards before, Walmart and Amazon, but now you can get rid of that old GPS and get something brand new at New Egg. Many of us want the latest gadgets, the latest smartphones, the MP3 players, the laptops, the gaming consoles. And we know that uh, audiences uh, who will watch this show have more gadgets per person than any other audience in the world. But what happens to all those old uh, gadgets? We, you know, I wish I could take the camera around the corner here because there's, there's an area of the, of the studio, a corner, where it's just boxes of old gadgets. Guess where they're going? Gazelle. You get a box, you go on Gazelle, and, uh, and you tell it what you have. They've got 20 product, product categories, 200,000 items. They will tell you what it's yeah. worth, either cash for your used items or if it's like just non-functioning. They will responsibly recycle them. And now with uh, Newegg.com, Gazelle gives, Gazelle gives the customers a fast and easy way to trade in the used electronics and get a Newegg gift card for the trade-in value. You know Newegg. They're, they're the best online retailer. Um, their shopping experience, rapid delivery, customer service. In fact, I think their slogan is, if you know, you Newegg. Take it from a geek. 84,000 products, award-winning website, uh, 1.9 million plus customer reviews, high photo. I actually read the customer reviews on Newegg before I buy. It's really great. So get all those used gadgets from your home, your office, the backs of your drawers, your closets, your basements, and then visit this site, newegg.com, N-E-W-E-G-G.com, slash trade to see what your gadgets are worth. As Newegg says, Hmm. take it from a geek, me, newegg.com. Slash trades. I'm gonna click the trade button. What do we get? What are we gonna get rid of here? Let's think. I just looked up my uh, iPhone 3GS. Yeah, it's worth 155 dollars. Wow, that's enough to get a yeah. new one almost. I'm gonna get. That's well, enough to. I mean, get a few of those and you have a PC. What I do mean, you think my HP uh, touchpad is worth? <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Device fully functional. Yes. Overall condition perfect. I I just took it out of the box once. Power adapter. Original battery, original cables. Let's calculate here. By the way, they, they have these great graphs that show how the values change. Three hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, it's almost worth it. <laughs> I'll just add it to the box. Uh, you put together the box. They give you the mailing label, so you don't have to pay for shipping. And uh, their data, uh, by the way, their data experts will remove the uh, personal data on here. So it's really great. I now have two items in my box worth six hundred. Schmackers. New egg. Dot com slash trade uh, trade we thank uh, gazelle and newegg for their support of windows weekly they know that our windows weekly uh, viewers and listeners have a lot of stuff they want to trade in that's for sure i gotta remember that new egg is newegg.com slash trade yeah easy you yeah, use new egg right the window you yeah. use, you use new egg i do i mean i always buy stuff at new egg i love new egg i have a whole pile of stuff right here i could do it i, know. I could do this during the I podcast know. and I know. You might as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing Sudoku. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so Microsoft sell Bing. I, why did this get? Is, first of all, Bing's not on the market, is it? No. No. And, no. Uh, and it, start, it started, uh, but, well, uh, okay, let's be honest. In their, in their quarterly uh, uh, earnings call, they're still losing money online, right? It's, yep. It's yep. expensive. Yeah. Is that what started well, right, it? Because all of a sudden. In other words. But the future of computing is in the cloud, right? Yeah. Mobile, connected, all that stuff. So why get rid of Bing? Um, you you have to invest in that, right? So I, I just—it's uh, amazing well, but, how but, much play this has gotten. 
It is. It's and the oversimplified way to that everybody's looking at it is okay. Just separate the the online systems division from the rest of Microsoft, sell it, and boom, everything's great. Except the people who are who are saying this don't realize how much Microsoft's already integrated Bing into everything. I mean, look at Windows Phone, right? It's it's thoroughly integrated into that platform. Yep. They can't just cut it off and toss it off to the side. So this started with two writers for Reuters who cited a two point right. six billion dollar loss in Microsoft's mm -hmm. online division last year. That's a big loss. In a year. In a year. But Microsoft is a company that can swallow that kind of loss because it's not a it's not a pure loss, it's an investment. You know, that's like saying I, I you know I took a twenty thousand dollar loss in my car last year. Well, right. <laughs> you right. know, you're you're paying for it. I mean it's you know this is something you're gonna have for a while. It, I, I I think that you know, you can make different arguments for different products and technologies or whatever, but uh, it's not so much that an online service that, I'm sorry, a search engine is integral to Microsoft's future, but that's not just what Bing is, right? Uh, this is a much bigger thing than that, and it is really integrated into everything, well, a lot of things are doing. It's going to be part of Xbox, it's part of Windows, it's part of Windows Phone, like Mary Jo said. I mean, mm -hmm. this is, it's a big part of the future of the company. So I mean, if Bing fails, whatever. Maybe Microsoft fails. I, I, you know, I think it's, it is really one of those bet the company type bits. How long can they continue to lose? First of all, we don't know that Bing was the whole 2.6 billion. I mean, there's they didn't right. break that down. Right. By the right. way, a, a lot of that is you know they're investing in infrastructure for data centers, for Office 365, and for Windows Azure and for the other Azure products. I mean, Microsoft is making a, a concentrated migration to the cloud a lot of it is that kind of stuff right yeah. not not being and online advertising too right, right. i mean okay. online advertising is in that division so yeah yep. all right so we don't There's really some evidence know. too yeah actually right i was you know online advertising is interesting because microsoft i think we talked about this last week you know they have a pretty decent share of the search market close to 30 percent in the united states right but including yahoo no well including yeah, yahoo. yeah with yahoo and I think it was 27%. They don't yeah. really generate a, a, what they should ad-wise. Th it seems like there's something wrong with the, I don't know if it's the advertising technology, maybe they don't get the same prices that Google gets, whatever it is. But I think that that's a, a bit of it as well. And it makes sense. You know, it's saying it would be like saying to Amazon 10 years ago, you know, you should really sell that book division because it's costing you a lot of money. To <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or to Netflix, you know, you're really going to start shipping DVDs around? Yeah. That's, uh, you know, electronic is the That's future. That's expensive. Yeah. That could cost you a lot. Yeah. Of money. They're in a building period. They're building their online uh, presence. That makes perfect sense. Although two point, is, think, there, is there a fire in your neighborhood? Is that what I hear? <laughs> Mary Jo. Yes, that's my neighborhood. Oh, is that your neighborhood? She's in Manhattan. <laughs> She's in Manhattan. <laughs> You know, what Sorry. we've got to do no, with no, this okay. setup is we've got to start do it broadcasting in stereo so you can hear that, oh, <laughs> yeah. there's a fire yeah, engine yeah, yeah. on the right. That must be Mary Jo. We have to do that from now on. <laughs> it's like the early Van Halen albums where the guitar would always be on one side and the rest of the band would be on the other. <laughs> and Eddie, Eddie off in the corner. Yeah. And then David Lee Roth, he's way in the back because they didn't want to talk yeah, to well. him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let us uh, move on to our third item of the day. Survey says... IE9 <laughs> is the best browser for business. What a shock. What a shock. Did Richard yeah. Dawson... Yeah, so what, I, I'm curious about Mary Jo's take on the Microsoft-sponsored study thing, because obviously <laughs> there's some... Well, for some reason this is controversial. Well, but, well okay, I mean, first of all, if it said Chrome, yeah. you think Microsoft would, 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 would well, be Well, but happy? that's what I'm... So here's the thing. I, having actually done a study for Microsoft, I can tell you that they were only interested in the truth. And yes, it's probably true that if Microsoft sponsored a study about something and they didn't get the results they wanted, they you would probably be wouldn't see it. Promoting you it. Probably yeah. wouldn't see it. Yeah. That's probably true. Um, but that's the point, right? I mean, I, 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 I'm not saying that this is true. In fact, I look at this particular study, which involves the economic impact of IE9, and I think, well, some of these numbers I don't quite understand where they come from. But I'm just curious. You know, you've obviously yeah. you've seen a lot of this kind of thing. I mean, what do you what do you think of this? Yeah. Well, you know, I. I've kind of stopped covering sponsored studies because <laughs> because no matter what happens, no matter even if the results came back and said, you know, IE9 is best for these eight things, but these two things not so much, you're still going to get people saying, I just don't believe it. 
it's a Microsoft sponsored study. It's invalid. Yep. So I've just kind of made it a policy to stop covering those. Yeah. And I, I, to your point, I, I agree. They, you know, they can't really influence the results on these, but they can influence the way they're presented. Yep. So. Yes. Yep, that's true. So I stay away from them. So for apparently Mo worse. Mozilla recently said, uh, we don't really want enterprise customers. <laughs> so that went over that went over really well, by the way. I thought that was um, that was a, a brilliant little a brilliant little bit of marketing on their part. <laughs> that just well, that's what happens when you're a nonprofit, right? Um, yeah. And it's Asa Asa Dotsler, who has ha attacked sure, you, sure. as I remember, uh, in the past. He should he should be more outspoken. He's a quiet, <laughs> he's very, quiet man. He's, he, um, he has his opinions, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, and uh, so I, he, I actually like Asa Dotsler quite a bit. I I. I I, think he's a I do too, guy. and I'm glad he exists. Uh, 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 but he says, "Enterprise," yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'll quote: "Enterprise has never been, and I'll argue, shouldn't be a focus of ours until we run out of people who don't have sysadmins yeah. and enterprise deployment teams looking out for them. I can't imagine why we'd focus at all on the on those kinds of environments." Hmm. So Although then they did come back and create an enterprise customer council after the whole yeah. brouhaha about this hit. I wonder if he's on. I wonder if he's on that console. That <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I he's the guy it. in the dunking tank. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, th and that's kind of the point. Of Mozilla is an open source project, and you know when you have open source projects, you have a lot of people. Um, yep. and yep. evolved and and many some of them, many of them have voices but they don't all agree and sure. anybody who's ever worked on an open source project knows there's a lot of you know there's a lot of battling over the heart and soul nevertheless microsoft's ie group must have been very happy when they heard that because obviously oh, ie9 yeah. is and, uh, aimed at business right i mean that's I, I think the point here though is that they're looking at very big businesses right these are uh, customers with 50,000 desktops and so they're trying to come up with some kind of a savings feature and I, right. as i went through this I read the study and I thought, well, I don't quite get where the I don't quite get where's the money savings occurring here, you know? Right, because right. There, obviously there are costs involved. Microsoft is trying to say, look, when you're uh, migrating to Windows Seven, you could you should migrate to IE nine as part of that, and that there, there's some justification for IE nine being a a way to set you up for the future, right? Where mm -hmm. we know that Microsoft is doing a lot around HTML five and web standards and all that stuff, and and I think there's some importance to that, but it's hard to quantify. What the savings are to that bit of it, right? You know, if you just switch to like a web compliant browser, you'll save you know X amount of dollars. It's kind of a tough thing to say. So they had some information about um, you know the security benefits, uh, the redu reduction in help uh, desk calls, and so forth. But then it, I think those you can make some guesstimates about uh, savings, and then it obviously gets fuzzier uh, once you get outside of that stuff. But New peripherals <laughs> for the yeah, moving right along. <laughs> moving right along. Mo well, it's you know I'm kind of with Mary Jo. It's like you know Fair industry enough. sponsored study. Well, okay, fine. Of course it's going to say that, but I, I think you can make a strong case without the study that IE nine is yep. is yep. you know yep. for, for deployment reasons and and a lot of other reasons, uh, policy edit and stuff is the right choice for enterprise. Do, mm -hmm. What Mary Jo? What do you think? I mean, do, uh, do enterprises use Mozilla uh, for their intranets? Do they design everything for IE nine? IE9 must have a lot of no, penetration. I, Why even put another browser in do. your build, right? Well, well, I think there's a few reasons unless you Unless you're might. Google. Um, I don't, <laughs> unless yeah. you're Google, right. Yeah. But, I, you know, one time, I'd, I'd actually like to hear from other listeners and uh, viewers if they have problems with IE9 on Windows 7. Because I've, I've talked to Ed Bott about this a little bit. Ed, I don't run IE9 on Windows 7 anymore as my browser because it's so slow. slow. Chat, a couple Which of people in the crazy, chat room say right? yes. A couple of people in the chat room say yes. yes. It's not ideal. And, um, yeah, I, I, it's supposed to be the fastest browser, especially on Windows 7. And I'm sure it's something else I have installed on my PC that's conflicting with it. Right. But for me, it's so slow, it's not usable. And I've switched to Chrome because of that. Right. I love Chrome. I use Chrome all the time. Um, some people say I need, I need I starts up faster, but a lot of people say it runs slower. I think that it's just, it's kind of a toss up from you know performance wise between yeah. these browsers. The, the the bigger issue for me is just the little things that get in the way, and when enough of them happen, you stop using it. You know, so. Yep. I think we lost Paul. I noticed he had frozen. So uh, yeah, he's not frozen on hear? our end here for whatever reason. Oh, but he's okay. frozen on the screen, <laughs> so that's why I don't know what's happening. Okay, can you still hear me? 
Yeah, it's we a can. TV. <laughs> I can. <laughs> no, it's How that's so weird that he'd be frozen on the screen and <laughs> not frozen totally in, fine here. in real life. Yeah, okay. So it, can Leo still hear me? Oh yeah, you sound fine. I just actually, it's a nice shot okay. of you. It's very flattering. So I'm yep, just going yep. to stare at it, <laughs> and you may continue <laughs> speaking. We'll just pretend. well, what I was, all I was saying was that there are little things in I nine that get in the way. So for example. Um, you can very easily, you, you, you select some text, you copy it to the clipboard, and when you paste it inside of Chrome, which I do a lot for uh, my articles when I post them, I have to cut and paste the entire article, po you know, paste it into a web form on my company's website, I can very easily paste as text in Chrome, which you can't do in IE9. There's a way to do it, but it's not easy. It's not a simple little keyboard uh, fast control. Um, the other one is spell checking. You know, there's no spell checking built into mm -hmm. IE9, which kind of drives me crazy. Um, you have the ability to do web app pinning, but the apps that you pin in IE9 have more window Chrome, so they're not as useful on a low-resolution screen. So you hit enough of those after a while, and it's like, well, you know, it's it, to me it's not so much the performance, it's like the little things, you know. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I, for me, it's more just when I open a tab, it takes forever for the site to come up. And huh. it just really makes it unwieldy. I right. just don't go to it as my go-to browser because it takes forever to open. Do you use the 64-bit version or do you use the 32-bit version? No, you, um, no, I have 64-bit Windows 7, but I'm using 32-bit. Yeah, everyone, on is, it. everyone, everyone uses 32-bit. You know, I think a lot of the problem with IE9 is just its heredity. It's like it's got the word IE in it, and people think back to 5, 5, and 6. <laughs> Seriously. And I think that, uh, you know, ever since IE7, it's been much more secure, much more reliable. It's been, a, it's been a modern browser. But there's all this, you know, in your head, the back of your head. Oh, yeah, I remember IE6. Oh, I remember IE5.5. IE and Microsoft doesn't help much by having big websites saying, get off of IE5. <laughs> it just reminds you how bad it was, right? So yeah. I think some of it's just a branding. You know what they should call it? IE 7.5. No, I don't know. They should, they, they should then the, uh, the rendering engine could be IE 7.1. Yeah, they, could, right. they should just change the name. Call it, um, call it Bob. No, that's bad. Uh, so yeah. moving along. Call it Trident. They have Trident. Cool code name. Is that the code name, Trident? Yeah. It was their code name for the rendering engine. Yeah. I think that's not it a good name. Is, right? cause it it, still it is. just sounds like a three-pronged yeah. fork that might poke you in the butt. I don't know stick why. You. Yeah, stick you. I don't know why. We need come on. We should have a contest. It's that. It's that too. A new name for IE. Let's forget internet. Even the name Internet Microsoft Explorer. Starts to draw all their product names. Well, maybe that's the thing. Yeah. But doesn't Internet Explorer sound dated? I'm going to explore I don't like it the I, internet. I stumble over it. It's when I say it, I say it like it's internet. You know, in, I can't. In, I internet. have a hard time just saying internet. In, internet. Inter because it's followed by Explorer. So you know this is coming. So it's like Internet yeah, Explorer. Right. You know, you, you kind of blurt it out and you yeah, drop right. a little bit of it. Yeah. I think Chrome, like, is a great name. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't right. make a lot of sense, it's, but it's, it's just short simple. to the point. Yeah. No, it makes no sense at all. It doesn't have to. In fact, it's, it's ironic in some ways because it, Chrome, of course, is about the minimization of Windows, Windows Chrome. Mm -hmm. Why don't we call it Shiny Happy Browser? <laughs> don't wait. Trident. I, I, <laughs> Trident's okay, but Shiny Happy Browser. I'm not kidding. There's a psychology, and I think Internet Explorer has a bad name. And if you just, it's That's time to call it Shiny Happy, people would like it. Oh, I want to try the Shiny Happy browser. You could call it Sleep Near. I like Kumo. Remember, Kumo. They, they bought the name Kumo, and for they Bing, almost right? used that, was... that instead of Bing, right? Yeah. Kumo. Yep, yep, yep. Kumo is Japanese for spider, is that right? Oh, Steve. Oh, that sounds That's scary. Right. Uh, yeah. That's so scary. Well, it could be a fuzzy fun spider. <laughs> It's 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 all it's all in the logo. This is, by the way, the problem yeah, is with is. an international corporation and branding now is impossible. Yes, it's almost as if you go, well, we don't like. I'm sure somebody at Microsoft says, well, we're not crazy about IE and Internet Explorer as a name, but uh, what are you going to do that's better? And 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 we can trademark in 700 countries and in 15 languages. Yep, yep. It's just yep. hard. So let's move along. I've always, you know, I think what's okay. always been moving, move, missing from the Xbox 360 experience is the chance to look like yep. one of those Bluetooth earpiece-wearing dorks while you're playing a game. Fortunately. Well, actually, so that, that, that chance does exist. Uh, but the, the problem is the, the one they have today is white, and it's a little bulky. So actually, so la last year, uh, last 
Probably oh, about a year Lord. ago now. Oh, Lord. I think I was in New York for a Microsoft event. Actually, it might have been... Did you, I don't remember when it was. It doesn't matter. But um, the Zoom guys were showing off the Zoom integration bits that they put into the Xbox last fall. Um, and I said, you know what you need is a way to navigate this Zoom interface using a remote control. Now, the Xbox does have a, a media remote control today. It's like a... a a media center type remote control, right, right. and but I said it has to. It should be styled like these new Xboxes, right? Because the new ones are beautiful looking. They're black and shiny, and it's been a year, but it will be coming out this fall. Shiny and piano uh, black it remote. Like. It's pretty. Yeah. Nice. So this is for bucks. people using it as a media center more than a gaming device. Well, except so, <laughs> the media center is a bit of a tough term because. Xbox 360 does have that interface, the Media Center interface, right? right, uh, right. Media Center extender, they call it. But what's missing on that remote, by the way, is the green button. The Media Center button is missing. Oh, you're right. And a right. lot of people see that and they think, oh, that's, uh, what does that mean? You know. Now, there's a live TV button, but of yeah. course we know live TV is coming. Uh, there's a guide button, and that would be part of the live TV t stuff, I'm sure. I mean, this may, in fact, represent our first real clue that they are moving away from Media Center for television or video type content mm. in the living room interesting so there's a little bit of a you know I'm, no it's not definite but uh, there's, there is a little bit of evidence there that maybe that is the direction they're going in so uh there's the remote but then there's also this bluetooth earpiece yeah um 60 bucks because you know when you're when you're uh, screaming <laughs> profanities of people <laughs> you it's important to do it in the most efficient wireless fashion. Well, I guess it doesn't really... I mean, the other, what are the other choices? There are headphones. looks like headphones with a boom on it. Well, they have wired headsets that uh, plug right. into the hand I have controller. that, yeah. Yeah, they, you know. And those things, they're cheap and they break easily. Yep. Of course, when you're throwing your uh, controller at the wall, you usually rip the wire up by mistake. Right. You know, there's all the... So this <laughs> solves that problem, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but you look like such a... You know, you look like, you know, Michael Douglas in Wall Street. You wear well, it's... These things. But it's you're in training to be that kind of douchey guy walking so. down the street with his Bluetooth. I guess I guess these will <laughs> yeah. do. I guess these will do well. Now the remote is cheap. It's twenty bucks. Good price. Yeah, uh, sixty dollars. The, the headset, headset is sixty. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little price. I think that's what they they have one today. I think it does cost sixty dollars. Oh, they have one. Somebody else, a third yeah, party it's makes white. it. You know, it's it's just white. no, no. Microsoft actually makes one. It actually goes over the back of the ear. It's kind of an right. awkward looking design. Okay. Lots of bad reviews. Um, Bad reception doesn't work well. So, I wonder sure. if they're going to be um, doing a whole line of headsets for Skype now that they're getting Skype. You know? Oh, they should. Yeah, they should. Skype it could be you a know, whole has a, new line. It, there is a Skype store on the Skype site where they sell you know Skype compatible hardware. Um, I don't yep. know if some of that's Skype branded or not, but boy, that is an opportunity for Microsoft. Absolutely. Let me go. Let me go to the Skype accessories. Uh, page here. See, they sell all this stuff. Skype at home, Skype at work, mm -hmm. Skype anywhere, headsets and all this stuff. Um, but I don't know sure. if any of this stuff is... Um, yeah, Logitech uh, and Free Talk. That's a funny camera. Look, it's a little person. <laughs> Why would you buy that? <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's just strange. A little you person. really take your job seriously, don't you, Bob? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, you're going... <laughs> You know, if you were the... We'll see Channel 9 guy. <laughs> the yeah, Channel it does. Channel 9 guy camera for Skype. It'd be, it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, but the, these are so these are all opportunities. Uh, this is kind of... What funny. am I? <laughs> <laughs> You're a big camera head. That's what you are. This is pretty funny. I like this. Um, so, yeah, they sell a lot of stuff right now, but they don't, none of it is uh, Skype uh, branded. Uh, uh, Microsoft could easily jump in here. Let's see what the... I didn't realize Skype is pushes it pushes their work stuff as well. All Logitech and Free Talk. Oh, there's Creative. Yeah. So, yeah, these are other people. There's a little guy wearing a suit. Wouldn't that be funny? I like that little guy. <laughs> Same like little that. guy, but he's got a you know a three piece suit on. Here's the yeah. Skype for TV. Uh, Free Talk, Panasonic, and Sony. Yeah, yeah, huge opportunity for Microsoft. And I presume that once they own Skype, that all of these partnerships are maintained. Look, I mean, if Panasonic puts Skype in a television, sure. that's going to be there for yep. a long time to come. Skype-enabled Blu-ray players. Look at that. Sony. Some big partnerships here for Microsoft. And you can't, you can't screw with Sony and Panasonic. You can't mess with them. All right. Moving, uh, moving right along. I'm sure we are. Next. 
Microsoft. <laughs> I don't know why this is in this. I, I don't think Mary Jo wrote this. Linux turns 20 years old today. Happy birthday, yep. Linux. It was in 1991 <laughs> that uh, Finnish graduate yep. student and longtime <laughs> seasonal affects disorder syndrome sufferer Linux, <laughs> Linus Linux Torvalds, suffering through a long Finnish winter, said, oh, I think I'll write an operating system. And and Linux was born, twenty years ago today. I thought Linux. I thought it was going to be the future, right? When did you? I, think I really that? thought they were onto something. I think nineteen ninety one. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't. no, mid nineties. Mid nineties. I I saw this as a very big danger, um, because at the time the notion was, if they could just do what Windows does and have it be free. I mean, how do you fight that? Right. Mm -hmm. You know that was my that was my thinking at the I'll time. I'll be honest and with you. I think early... Liz, on the desktop yep. future is getting brighter as Apple becomes more Big Brother, and Microsoft yep. just kind of fritters putters along. I pardon me, I, present well, company accepted. I, I actually I, I so Linux arguably is already winning because it's, it's in every op Android, in every uh, right. website. Yeah. Yeah. So when you look at the way the future has changed, you know Microsoft basically vanquished both Linux and Mac. OS 10 on the desktop, and now, ironically or whatever, they're getting destroyed by them in the mobile world. Isn't so that funny. Android is Linux. It's kind of it's yeah. interesting. It's the same players essentially. Yeah. yeah. And suing everybody. Well, he's suing each other. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Vanquished everywhere except in court. In court. Well, you know. I, so so um, they're not suing everyone. I mean, sometimes they settle. Do they have a licensing agreement? Right. <laughs> so, right. In fact, that's <laughs> probably know. what's going to happen. And then also. Uh, yeah, there's also some interesting partnerships, right? Uh, Microsoft just renewed its unholy alliance or whatever with uh, SUSE, the formal, the former Novell. They ju they they, um, they they're going to invest a hundred million dollars in SUSE. Uh, they're buying Linux support licenses or something. Again, right. I, I yeah. don't even understand. I, I all I can imagine is that they're like spooled on toilet paper rolls in the you know in the bathrooms at <laughs> yeah, Microsoft. Have another campus. one. I don't even. <laughs> you know what yeah, this is? This sure. this this is all about indemnifying customers. Is what this is. It is, yes. right. So explain what and, that you know, means. They, I just said really it. I didn't know what it that. means. But what does it really mean, Mary Jo? <laughs> well, it means the customers who get the certificates from Microsoft for SUSE are guaranteed that Microsoft won't sue them. <laughs> Basically, oh, that's minute. what it means, pretty much. <laughs> so essentially, Leo, you can put that in the bank. <laughs> so essentially, they're giving SUSE a hundred million dollars. And then, in effect, right. they're selling this uh, this ish, inch. <laughs> it would be a terrible thing if your business was to burn, yeah, yeah, yeah. burn in a terrible fire. They're selling this insurance to customers who buy Microsoft Enterprise. What is what Microsoft products uh, do you buy to get this certificate? <laughs> Any <laughs> right? Well, what what one case where a lot of people have bought them in the past is people who want to run uh, Linux guests on Hyper V. Right. Okay, so you're running Linux so on Microsoft. You want to make sure. Yeah. Right. Yep. You don't want Microsoft to turn around and go, hey, guess what? You're running Linux, and we're going to sue you, even though you're running it on Microsoft. Yeah, so th this is... Uh, I, I, think this it's is a, it's, I think it's a perfectly healthy relationship. I'm not sure what the complaining is about here. These guys all get along great. <laughs> you know, it would be a terrible thing if, if you, you were to back, get sued well, for using our product. <laughs> so we will indemnify you if you purchase. What? It, but do you, do you like give them money? I mean, what is the deal? You. I just... <laughs> no, and, you know, if you go back to the original patent agreement between the two, because it was a patent agreement. Right. That's it's all it about was. software patents. Um, cross licensing. It was. It was two right. ways, wasn't it? Cross licensing. It was. It was a, but really, what everyone got it up in arms about five years ago was they felt like Novell was admitting that their patents that they were infringing on Microsoft patents right. by signing by doing the this deal. deal. Right. They, they really upset right. the Linux community. So, yeah. Yeah. It did. So you it can. Really so did. you and can. And then it didn't help after that. <laughs> With Steve Ballmer saying, you know, that this is proof that. You know, the Linux people have to abide by the legal rules. I mean, he really kind of threw salt in the wound there and uh, didn't make for very happy a happy relationship. At the All beginning. this proves is that software patents are a crappy idea, and please, let's just get rid of that system. <laughs> That's all that proves. 
Just, uh, uh, we're free to draw our own conclusions from this, but... <laughs> That's my conclusion. <laughs> I had gotten a big debate on Twitter. Boy, try having a debate on Twitter, by the way, over software patents. Yeah. And uh, Nilay sure. Patel was kind of saying, yes, it's a good thing. And another guy was uh, uh, saying, you know, I mean, and I was, I was just saying, I don't see how you can ever say software patents are a good idea. I understand you want to protect people. But the, it, the, the, the burden on innovation it places... This this is a perfect yeah. example where there's just you know it's just a bad idea, and it's all because of patents, software patents. Yeah, I don't believe and Mary Jo may know this uh, to be true or not true, but I don't believe that the Microsoft patents in question have ever been challenged in no. court. No. I don't think that any of these have ever gone to nobody a can trial, afford it. I think you can't afford yeah. it. Yeah, right. Right. Well, and it's been really interesting. The one, the one case that's super interesting to watch is Barnes and Noble versus Microsoft, because Microsoft is going after Barnes and Noble on the Nook, because the Nook has Linux at the kernel. Right. right? So, right. the Barnes and Noble guys, hey, they've been very public about what Microsoft expected them to do. They said Microsoft wouldn't even tell us which patents we were violating until we signed an NDA. And why should we sign an NDA? <laughs> yeah, you know? They're suing us. <laughs> so the whole thing's crazy. Right, they're suing us. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll tell you what you're su it, we're suing you over a matter you of public an record. NDA. It's not. That's the, yeah. And they don't want it to be a matter no, of public record. No, it's not a matter record. of public record. Yeah. yeah. So everybody's saying, you know, Microsoft at one point a few years back said, Linux violates 235 of our patents. But, but we won't never tell said, you which ones. Well, which patents. Right. Not that Microsoft is all alone at this, because Apple gets payments from everybody, and now from HTC, I think HTC is going to settle with Apple over exactly the yeah. same thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it's, it's just it's a tough one because, well, we talked, we, you know, we've talked about patent trolls. I mean, the problem is companies like Apple and Microsoft are not patent trolls. I mean, they they really have they, they're defending they have, real patents, uh, responsibility right. to defend mm -hmm. patents for technologies they're right. actually using. That's why they shouldn't so be awarded patents. It is a slightly different thing. Yeah, it's the right. it's the, once you award the, the patent, you know, then they the, have the, to it's defend it. It's a chicken and the egg thing. You have to you have to defend it. Exactly. You have to defend it. Yep. Um, or you and, lose it. Yep. And uh, so the whole thing is just a mess. And uh, and what what you know who gets screwed is us because all this ends up getting done is passed down to the end user, and so you pay more for everything because you're paying these license fees. <laughs> Someday I hope to get a box from Microsoft that contains whatever, but wrapped all around it as the packing material, I hope, are SUSE licenses. <laughs> Indemnification for, certificates. You know, for indemn <laughs> yeah, it's Go a ahead. Of, like wallpaper my room with use, it or something. Use yeah. SUSE on Hyper-V. We won't sue you. Microsoft opens up Hotmail, Messenger, and SkyDrive to mobile developers. So do they have an API? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They've, I guess they've always had some form of API for Windows Live, but uh, they updated it recently and are, are apparently going to update it over time with better examples, specifically for people who are writing mobile apps for Windows Phone and Android and iOS. Um, I, the thing that I get from this is people have been waiting for a long time to see what Microsoft's going to do on the mobile device side with their services and also with really high-level projects like Office. And the hope is that they'll come up with their own clients and those things. But this makes me wonder if this means that Microsoft will never explicitly support SkyDrive on, you know, the iPhone because they won't have to. You know, that uh, other developers will just do that for them. Hmm. But I like that idea, yeah, actually. Just speculation. Yeah. 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 No, I think it's neat that it's opened up. Always you know, open, it up open it up. Because then you'll get this great yeah. uh, ecosystem going. And then you can sue them. So it's sure. great. It's really nice. But <laughs> <laughs> no, they, that's, I'm joking. My, it's my, not. Leo, it's like you finally get the Microsoft world. <laughs> <laughs> it took five years, but you're, 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 you're finally right there. Yes, <laughs> I figured it all out. It's a, it's a simple business strategy, but effective. Hey, no, we're just joking. We're it's just cooperation. We're just joking. We're just joking, kids. So uh, we're going to take a break, come back with more. Mary Jo Foley is here all about Microsoft.com. Yeah, our newest uh, member of the Windows Weekly team, and I'm so thrilled to have her uh, here on a regular basis now. If you go to allaboutmicrosoft.com, you can Thanks. see a compilation of all of Mary Jo's uh, articles for ZDNet. Um, many posts a day, so there's lots to read, and uh, it is a great insight into, uh, into everything there is to know about what's going on, particularly uh, at the enterprise level. We're going to talk about the <laughs> Gmail man. Uh, in just a second, as a yes. matter of fact, straight from Mary Jo's uh, post. 
uh, of earlier today. But first, I'd like to talk about my friends at Citrix and Go to Assist Express. If you are in the business of supporting people, uh, whether you're an IT person or a software professional who has you know clients who buy your programs, you know what a pain in the butt, what a pain in the took a software support can be, especially if you're doing it over the phone. The best way to do it, go online, remote support. There are lots of choices, I know, but there's only one that's cross-platform, 128-bit SSL, 24-7 support for you. It's called Go to Assist Express from Citrix. It's simply put, the easiest way to view and solve your users' problems remotely. Very affordable. You can buy day passes or month month-long passes. Uh, you can see and solve the problem. Even if your customers aren't there, they have unattended support. Run eight sessions at once, which means you can start a fix, start a scan, move on, move on, move on. Um, it's actually great. I use it with friends and family to, to, sh to teach them how to use new software to fix their problems. You can do it for training, absolutely. Um, and it lets you take control of the problem and solve it the way you know best. You don't have to walk them through it. I want you to try it free for 30 days, absolutely free. All you have to do is go to go to assist dot com slash windows g o t o assist dot com slash windows and you'll get a free thirty day trial. Let me see. I'm just curious. I'm going to go to go to assist dot com slash windows. I wonder if they have Paul's picture. No. We got to get this. Should Bastards. be that looks like Eileen. That looks. We should have we should have Mary Jo there and Paul there. I'm going to Photoshop your head onto that. And and that is the place to go. Go to assist dot com slash windows. You see how easy it is. Setup takes a couple of minutes, including the software install. That's true for your clients, too, which I think is really important. Uh, it's very simple for your clients to install and use. You just send them a link. They click it. They say allow so that the Java can run, and that's it, and you're in. Go to assist.com slash windows. Try it today. I use it all the time, and I love it. Moving along, the G what is the <laughs> who is the Gmail man? You, you gotta, you gotta look at this. At least one of the videos. <laughs> There's, they are absolutely they're, priceless. They're videos. Oh, that's hysterical. Oh uh, yes. There is. Explain I it to me while I pull up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, site. I'm gonna go to your site and get okay. the video here. So explain what All right, we're talking so, about. So, you know, Microsoft every year has this thing called MGX, the Microsoft Global Exchange, and it's okay. a big sales conference, like twelve thousand Microsoft sales guys in an auditorium bellowing and drinking and whatever Ooh, so fun they always show these funny videos <laughs> so turn on turn on the, should we turn on the audio on this is this yeah. the one is this it turn on the audio yep the same time he thinks it every subject in unreal time oh whoa in every sentence and all your punctuation god is knows in every colon in every situation in every colon <laughs> <laughs> so basically, the uh, implication is that Google's reading your mail, which they are, I guess. It's not an actual right. Gmail, man. And that they're using, yeah, they're using the keywords, blah blah mail? blah. No, <laughs> I'm looking at everyone's mail. How can you do that? <laughs> well, love that. Sometimes when a person really loves their Gmail very very much, <laughs> the two get together, <laughs> and it happens. Ew. <laughs> you can't do that, mailman. Of course I can. I'm not a mailman. I'm the Gmail man. <laughs> I bet this. I bet this got howls of laughter at the Microsoft conference. I'm sure. This should, this should be on TV. This is priceless. Good morning, yeah, go after him. Go after him. Carolyn Johnson, get up off of that painful itching and burning of yours. Come check this out. A little relief there. Oh, it feels good, right? No, what, have you been reading my mail? No, just skimming. For uh, <laughs> certain key words, uh, burning and sensation, cat and uh, dander. Hmm, good news is there's an ointment for four out of four of those brought to you by Pharmaceutico. Would you like a free two-week trial? No, no, actually I wouldn't because I was actually writing about a lasagna. I was afraid of burning and my husband said it was sensation all. I have a cat named Dandy, but you know, it's really actually none of your business. <laughs> My business, your business, it's all business. It's the business of advertising, personalized for whatever you're gmailing. Isn't that kind of wrong? <laughs> Who cares? 
Wow. His favorite game is peekaboo, his favorite word, so what? It's brilliant. He smiles in your face when you stutter, but, but, but. His ads are unsolicited based on what you type. Makes you want to ditch Gmail and go off as 365. He's oh, the oh. Gmail man. There's the pitch. So it is a little bit of FUD. That's what they're saying in the chat room. I mean, it's, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's true. It it's not... And that's what it's supposed to be. Right. That's why they don't it's make an ad out of it. They show it at their conference, not in public. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah. it's still it's still always interesting it's to see catchy. what they're telling their salespeople to sell, right? <laughs> so that's who sees this is, uh, is salespeople. Yeah. It's the MGX right. is uh, for sales. It is. Yeah. And I got to say, doesn't the Gmail man look a little like David Pogue? <laughs> Oh, wow, you think that's he on purpose? Does. He kind of does. I don't know. He, he even he has, has David's little... kind of attitude. Wow. He does. I didn't read that into it. Well, might as well that's hit just it. Too. Me reading might it as well it. strike out at everybody when you're making these videos. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I love the yeah. Gmail man. I, 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 I think it's brilliant. Paul and I it's have brilliant. been calling for more hands-off fisticuffs between corporations for a long time. Well, it, this is this is like the old Microsoft. You know, this is what I want: yeah. aggressive, in your face. Yeah. Um, I, it's a. I don't see this as fun at all. Are you kidding me? I mean, this is a. Well, this is, is what G, Google does. I mean, no. Yeah, but, but it, they don't. It's not. It's, there's not a man. There's not a human. This is the big. The big disconnect between this and the reality. Leo, of it Leo, is. Leo, Leo. Obviously, there's not a man. Well, that's, <laughs> but that's what they're but, saying. There's a guy reading your email. There's a big difference between a no, guy they, reading your email come, come and on. saying, "Hey, let me give you an ointment." Than a computer system. They're, they are reading your email to generate ads. There's and, no and by they. Way, what they said was very. Okay. It's a computer, <laughs> Paul. It's like Skynet has achieved. Uh, it, it's not a sentient computer. It's it it sees keywords. I don't actually. By the way, so I don't actually think that it's accurate to say that we don't know what what. Well, Google we don't know. Doing with our okay, email. you're we, right. We don't know. So, but the presumption. I, I mean, I, I, that's true. It could be a man. Microsoft it, is it, saying it we're could not be, reading a man. Hey, Paul. It could be President Obama. Yes. It, but that's not. I mean, you, we, we right. don't know. Doesn't mean it could. It could be. So you're saying, I mean, Microsoft. We could do know be that also. Google is reading mail. Google as an entity is reading your email to generate ads. This is an absolute fact. I didn't say a human being, but it doesn't. They've programmed. A but there's no guarantee that Office 365 is somehow private. Actually, there is a guarantee. I think I there think is that's a guarantee. The, what yeah. do they that's say? What they're saying. They say we can't read your We're mail. We're not doing that. Well, we're not doing yeah. that. They say yeah. we're not we're not using your any keywords in any of your mail to generate ads. No, because you're paying like, for the it, service. It's, they have it's a whole not privacy a free policy. service. Right. It's not free. How about Hotmail? It's not free. You think they read their read your mail in Hotmail? I don't know the answer, but I'm I, guessing I, I, the answer based is on no. Do they have horrific context, the ads are on Hotmail? Do they have context sensitive no. ads in Hotmail? No, they have they have, they they have tower ads in Hotmail. They don't they don't no, have they don't. any relationship to your email? And how do we know that? Because all you have to do is look at Hotmail. We can at look one. at Hotmail. Because <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Let's go look at Hotmail. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I think, think that's what I mean, one of the freak... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Well, it's just one of the freakier things about Hotmail is looking at those ads. So you look at a, I, I, well, no, if you go to Gmail and actually look at an ad, I mean, it's bizarre what they come up with. No, you I know, because they're matching yeah. words. But that's not necessarily... I mean, I don't... It's FUD. I'm, I'm not defending okay, Google, but you get so. a free service, and you, you know what the deal is. They're going to match ads to words in your email. If you I don't do like that... A lot of people, you know, it's, it, 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 this is very reminiscent of a pay debate for a I had on Twitter today about a different topic, but it's interesting to me that I, I really don't believe that people understand what's happening behind the scenes and that sometimes this kind of thing can be shocking to the average person, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, it's true that Gmail is free. I mean, there, but there are a lot of free email services. They're not unique in that regard. Is one of the people from this week in Google running your <laughs> IT department? Or... They are. We are I all think big. The Gmail man. Yeah, yeah. The Gmail man. The gave Gmail me this man Chrome is notebook. running it. And so now I'll solve result, this problem. I'll insult you all. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm just trying to be. I'm just trying to be uh, reasonable. You're right. You can't prove the negative. You can't prove that. You know, the moon isn't green cheese on the other side. But, well, I guess you could prove it. I really don't think this is that kind of argument, but <laughs> okay. Well, I do. I mean, because, what, well, what you're saying is I don't trust Google. So they, and they could be doing anything. I'm not saying that. 
No, no. I'm, I'm saying I, we know that they're, they are, in fact. But they're doing them. the same thing that a spam filter does. They're looking at the mail and, and, and doing something. But they're doing it to generate ads. Okay. But you're getting a free service, so. I guess what I'm saying is simply you're okay with that. And actually, I'm okay with it. Of course you are. You uh, use I find Gmail, it I notice. Yep. So uh, what I'm, I guess my, what I'm trying to say simply is that I think a lot of people wouldn't be okay with this and don't understand that this is what's happening. Right. And that it's, right. it's not necessarily, you know, it's, it's just because you're okay with it doesn't mean everyone else is okay with it. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think the other part of it is uh, the, the people who are probably the least okay with it are small business and enterprise users who that's, you know, they, they're assuming people aren't looking at their corporate mail, but yep. if you're using Gmail as part of then the question comes up, are they looking at it? And that's yep. your corporate mail. Right. Does, uh, I wonder if Google Docs, which you do pay for, not a lot, but you do pay for, I wonder if that mm -hmm. has, does that have, uh, that doesn't have ads in it, no. <laughs> well, okay. so they're not scanning that. Do you think Google should do a better job of telling people what they're doing? Should they, are they not communicating that effectively? I, I think there's a reason why there's that cartoon of Eric Schmidt where he's kind right. of laughing. Yeah, because like Microsoft maniac. paid that company you know, a lot of money to make that video okay well they did <laughs> all right that was a made by well, a pr okay. firm uh, uh, that was speak more heavily then. supported I think by there's microsoft a, there's a reason that people don't trust google and it's because they're not transparent about this kind of thing i think so, they're yes. very transparent I, I think though that it it is um it does creep people out and i th but i think google's pretty transparent about it i think they're very clear about it there was a big a brouhaha when this all happened when gmail came out and people said oh this is terrible you think normal people, though, have well, no idea? No, I, I don't think they understand. What should yeah, Google do? That if what you should go Google to... do? Right. What, what I should... think they should not do what they're doing. Well, they, should, <laughs> they, they, they shouldn't should have do. contextual ads on Gmail. I don't think they're effective um, because, as that uh, that little funny video kind of points out, they by looking at words in a, in a mail, they're not necessarily contextual. They're just based on random words in a mail. It doesn't mean that they're contextual. Well, shouldn't that reassure um, you? That reassures you about Hotmail, that it doesn't, that it's not done well. Shouldn't that make you feel better about it? No, because, you know, they're only going to get better. I mean, I, I, I think that they're, they're going down a certain route here that I just think is a little, it's a little iffy, that's all. You know, I, I, guess, I guess my attitude is uh, they should be clear about it so that people know what the deal is that they're making with uh, Google when, when they sign up for Gmail. Yeah. Um, and well, then, and Google, then... the, they, by the way, they do have a link. So I, if you go into Gmail and it, it, at the bottom of the ads, it does say about these ads and it goes to a page that explains what they're doing. And actually, that is perfectly acceptable. Okay. Um, they, are, they do have a page on their site that explains this is what they do. Right. Um, what they don't offer is a way to opt out of this, right? Um, yes, they do. They, you can buy Google Docs. And that opts you out of ads. Yeah. If you pay for it. So I guess kind of my, my issue is that there are a lot of people who want free services and they get irate because there's ads. Um, and well, so but, I think Google should be, here's my feeling, Google should be allowed to do Gmail. They should be allowed to do the ads exactly as they do it, provided they fully disclose and they say in return for a free service, what we're going to do is our automated systems, just like the spam system looks for spam, our automated ad systems will go through the mail and look for appropriate ads. <laughs> if you don't want this, mm -hmm. please don't sign up for Google Mail. Use a paid email service like the, Office okay, 365. So the, pro the, problem is, the problem is you can't actually pay not to have these ads. You, you can pay to get Google Docs, which is a custom domain. You can't take your existing Gmail right. uh, account and, and not see ads. But you can have and a paid a Gmail account that's not the same account, but you but, can have a paid account. But not a Gmail account. I wonder, you know, I haven't signed up for Gmail in years. I wonder what they tell you when you sign up for a new Gmail account. Do they yeah. say, I mean, what, hey, what, you're going to get they, a, say on they their... should be very clear at that point. They should yeah. say, you're signing up for a free mail system. The way this works is you're going to get ads. And we're going to yep. get those ads contextually from what you put in the emails. I mean, I, it doesn't strike me that that's, if they're clear about that, it strikes me as a normal thing. Yeah. 
they, it's it, you know you do have to you can go and look at it you know and you can in fact it says uh, they call these things signals right yeah. it does say that you can show more useful ads which is the default right. by using importance signals from across my messages uh, you can also you can disable that you can't disable ads um, of course so I'm looking I'm at my now. Gmail and so this is it about these links. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? Is that yep, does that yep, explain yep. the ads? Yeah. So I got an email from someone at Twit, and it's funny on the side. The ads are for such things as townhomes in Petaluma, New Zealand vacation, <laughs> Tennessee hotels. You know. So they're not like, doing a great says, job, obviously. No, it's crazy. Some of them are nuts. I mean, um, I think this is. Look, they put a video in here. It says ad targeting <laughs> in Gmail is fully automated. No humans read your email. This type of automated scanning is how many email services, not just email, do spam filtering and spell checking. Ads are selected for relevance by the ads. I mean, I think that this is pretty clear. If they're lying about it, then you're absolutely right. You should be irate. I don't see any evidence they're lying. Uh, but I didn't, I don't, I'm not saying they're lying. I don't know what you mean by that. Well... Because you said earlier, well, we don't know what they're doing. Well, this is they say this is what they're doing. No, 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 no. I mean, in other words, we don't know how these things are generated. Yes, I, I know they're by a computer. My point was simply that uh, Google engineered the software that does this. I mean, right. they know they know what, what they're doing. It's nice that it's anonymous, but I, I think there are some privacy issues with any automated process going through your email. Well, then um, you shouldn't use Gmail. Data if that, that bugs you, you should use something else. I think you're right. And, and, and <laughs> okay, I think, well, let's use Hyper-V. <laughs> Yeah. I want to use Hyper V. No, I just, I just think that it's very to easy to, to create innuendo <laughs> about this. But, but yep. what is the real issue? Is the real issue that Google's not transparent and straightforward about them doing this? I, I mean, I don't know. This looks pretty transparent. Um, and if you make no, a, actually, I, no, I, I think it's, it's. I was going to say it's just a sales video, guys. No, no, I know. But the Paul and I are getting in a larger argument. I agree. The sales video is a sales video. He said it's not FUD. I think it's FUD. No, no, I, I think what I'm saying is don't just dismiss it. You say, well, this is FUD, and then we can move on from there. Like, well, well hold on a second. <laughs> I mean, they're making a point, which I think is valid, which is simply that Google is parsing your email. And for a lot of people, that is an issue. And it, as a, a Microsoft partner who's selling Office 365, that is something it's you a selling want point. to You're right. it's a selling point. Uh, go after. Absolutely. It's right. not just FUD. I mean, it, it's a, it is a legitimate concern that people will have. And, you know, like you said, if you don't want to use... If you don't want something parsing your email, don't use Gmail. Right. Well, now Microsoft is trying to sell you something that is an alternative to that. And right. that's a perfectly valid strategy. And they make, the, I mean, and they make uh, the promise in Office 365 that – is there spam filtering in Office 365? Yeah. Is there spell checking? Mm -hmm. Okay. In both those cases, they're scanning your I would emails. imagine. <laughs> but not, they're not using them to generate ads. That's the distinction I think they're trying to make. Right. Okay. It is a little weird, you know, if you're doing uh, research for something and you see uh, ads for things related to that show up. Oh, I, I know I that creeps that people out. I funny. understand that that creeps people out. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's move on. Avatar Connect. Bring your avatar to life. It's about time. Is it, so they showed this at CES. <laughs> yep. Are you using this? This just takes something horrible and makes it more horrible. <laughs> I, what does it do? I, is I it really... actually getting your, your picture and making it an avatar? Yes. Wow. Yes, it is. And, and, and then Speaking I, of things that creep people out. <laughs> yes. I don't like it. This is Uncanny Valley. No. And then you have chats, avatars talking to avatars. Well, we used to do that on Tech TV ages ago. Time. Ages ago. Yeah, yeah. So actually, hey, let, me th let me throw something by you that you may appreciate because I've been kind of dumping on Google here. The one thing that Google really gets right in Google Plus is that they force people to really be themselves. You can't just sign up and be some right. you know, bozo, miss, you That's know, very uh, controversial, by the way. It shouldn't be because one of the things that drives me nuts on Xbox Live is that these goons can have any name they want and then I can't find out who they really are. So you exist as some sort of a, you know, uh, an anonymous somebody. And that's nuts. Why, why is someone who can, hide their, who can hide their identity allowed to contact me over Xbox right. Live? Right. And then leave, by the way, in some cases an insane, you know, profanity-laced tirade in audio forum yeah, we because all know the, I, the, 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 the negative of the fact that people are anonymous online and, and, and do stuff right. because they're anonymous. Right, but you see what I'm saying, right? do. I agree. So, no, yeah, I just, I really, I have a big problem with that, and I feel like Microsoft should be doing more 
uh, to prevent that kind of thing. You know, and there's there's weird examples on the Xbox Live side of where they kind of overreach with this stuff and then where they kind of underreach with it. But without getting into too much detail, I would just say, you know, one of the things I, I, I saw about Google Plus that I actually firmly agree with is um, force people to be who they really are online. Um, so, because I think that will rein in some of the stupidity that people who are anonymous are allowed and, and more inclined to do. So do you think that we could do the show like this with Connect avatars? <laughs> I absolutely think we could do the show like this. <laughs> so this is this is, and I also think that we will, we should never do that. <laughs> this is Major Nelson. <laughs> uh, talking to somebody. That's Major Nelson. I, I don't know how much that yeah, looks, it looks like. Yeah, just Heard. like Major yeah. Nelson, who's like two hundred years old. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but this is cool. So this um, how is it capturing your movements? Is that how it's doing the gestures and yep. and and the lip sync yep. is done uh, through the connect m capturing your movements? Yep. Nothing creepy about this at all. <laughs> right. I want to do your this. Eyebrows. <laughs> Maybe we'll make you instead of. I'm thinking instead of doing, uh, instead of doing this uh, set that we do and using you know video. And yeah, stuff, we'll be avatars. We could just we could have saved so much money. We'll we could appear to be avatars. sitting next to you as the avatars. That would be so there. cool. Yes. Do I have to be an avatar? I guess I would have to be too. I don't know. I think you can mix and match. Really? Oh, can you? Oh well. Yeah, why not? Well, you could. I mean, well, you know, we, I, we, we have the means. This is like a. We have the technology, sure. and this works with an Xbox. Yeah. You Microsoft don't, just did. They just did a um, TV interview um, with CNBC and Craig Mundy on TV using the avatars. Yeah. Wow. It was pretty weird, and freaky. And Cra so yeah, Craig but, was a was know, an avatar. He he was an avatar, and wow. so was Maria. What's her name? Bar 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 Romo. Barter. Bartiroma. Let Bartiroma. me see. I I, I know this avatar. is going to get us in trouble and probably get this video banned from YouTube. But let's just, in a news context, <laughs> yeah, so we got to we got to watch their ad anyway. See, 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 NBC, you're going to get. See, an this ad. is actually a legitimate use of this. That's what I think. It's, new, it's, it's news. news reporting. Yep. It's free. It's fair use. But the problem is, <laughs> right. Google's YouTube uses the same automated technology as Gmail Man to find. Uh, uh, <laughs> to find violations of copyright. I bet it does. I yeah. bet it does. No, it does. And so it's got an automatic yeah. copyright. Uh, no human being ever watches the videos on YouTube. Mm, mm, mm. Well, they can't. 35 hours of video every minute are uploaded. <laughs> no, I know. Okay, yeah. so this is Maria. In re this is, that's not an avatar. Actually, no. I think Maria Bartromo has always been an <laughs> no, avatar. No, that's surprisingly lifelike. <laughs> Uh, she, <laughs> for someone on CNBC, she's surprisingly lifelike. Yeah, that's true. Um, come on, come on. Let's get to the let's get to the interview. Here okay. Connecting. The but it looks just like Craig. The, <laughs> yeah. Connecting. That's, the that's the Craig. Connecting. Maybe so, this yeah. is going to be how the Microsoft guys never appear to age. <laughs> See, that right. would be interesting if you could make this technology be this be real like really lifelike. That would be neat. Wouldn't that be neat? Yeah. Okay. Well, so they're, they're showing how it works. They're talking about using it in businesses, so. Really. Yeah. Then you wouldn't have to put on clothes. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So is that Maria? This is, no. Choose your back. Yeah, okay, so now they're going to do think. it. Yep, that's her. I'm right. really freaked by this. So she's... Uh, I just want to jump to the part where it's actually working. Maybe I can jump. <laughs> this, this, by the way, which is what everyone who's ever used a Connect has experienced. <laughs> can I just... Can I, I, <laughs> I just want to jump to the part where I can actually play I the game. I want to see oh, the Hold on, hold oh, on. They are. Okay. There we go. There. There. Okay, let me turn well, the sound up. Personally, that we're going to see applications in both domains. We decided to start this with Avatar Connect because we knew two things. So it takes first, everything we and makes it look kind of uh, juvenile and silly. Oh, that's gaming, so weird. Uh, and, and entertainment environments. We also knew that this was shifted primarily to a younger audience. Wow. In fact, there's probably 200 million avatars of one form or another that people have already created. Wow. Over so the if you're not watching on video, uh, you get a Connect and avatar, and they're in a virtual studio, and they look very much, well, not very much. They look a little bit like the real thing, but they're gesticulating. Uh, it's yep. the real voice. They're gesticulating in the in real time, and they're moving their mouth in, in fairly accurate lip sync. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> oh boy. Yep. It's it's un yeah. but you know they, they unleashed the kraken. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. That's really interesting. Yeah. Huh. But you know you know what they told I forget who they told this to but they said the reason they are really investing in this for businesses in the future is because of the bandwidth issues. You know like if you have a 
a real-time video conference using webcams, you're using a lot more bandwidth, they say, than if you have two avatars chatting oh, come in on. real time. You, what? That's what they said. I'm just telling you what they said. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, uh, really? <laughs> that makes sense. Wow. So it's really about know. saving bandwidth. That's what they said. Oh, you know, the, at the beginning, it's a fun thing for Xbox. But right. now they're already looking at how are we can we use this when we have Skype? How can we use this with Link? You know, which is their um, that's what's interesting, unified isn't communications it? program. Uh, that's what's interesting, yep. isn't it? Yeah. That's, they are. They're doing that, Paul. Believe it or not. No, and I believe it. I, that's why I'm groaning. I, I just, I'm just, <laughs> this is so wrong. It does seem like the wrong direction. I hate the Internet. <laughs> isn't the reason that we use uh, Skype and technologies like video so that yep. I can look at the real Paul and I feel like he's in, in here? And right, if I, right, if I right. make it an avatar, then it kind of distances it once again. Yeah, absolutely. There, by the way, she's uh, long, long time ago. I think it was the IE3 very early betas. There was a an avatar-based virtual space where you could go and chat with people, and you could bounce around yeah. in this 3D environment. Yeah. And it was very, it was uh, you know obviously like low res, life, and it was very bit. strange. Yeah, yeah. and we I don't remember that, what it was called. We used that on tech. But there was TV. a wind that would blow. Like it was, it was a weird environment. It was like an outdoor environment. Mm -hmm. And you could hear the wind, and it was kind of um... virtual places. That's the one we use on Tech TV. It was called Virtual Places. It was okay. an avatar. This is based like chat. a return of that. I mean, but we did that stuff back. That then was nineteen ninety eight. Dial up connection. Yeah. yeah well, terrible. that's what Mary Jo's saying is it's less bandwidth constrained because you don't have to all that. You don't have to all the details around you. I could just have your your hand movement send that very quickly along. A um, couple of real quick stories before we get to our picks and tips of the week. Uh, we actually yeah. meant to mention this on MacBreak Weekly, and I forgot. Uh, Amazon, Wall Street Journal, a lot of publishers changed their apps over this week so that you could not, for instance, on the Kindle app, buy books within the Kindle app on the iOS, on iPhone and iPad, because they don't yeah. want to give 30% to uh, Apple. Yeah. On the good news front, uh, the Kindle is finally moving towards allowing periodical subscriptions on bigger form devices oh, than, they, they, than they sell, like the iPad. But the problem is not all of them are available. So, for example, you could read the Washington Post through the Kindle app on an iPad today, but you can't do it with the Wall Street Journal. Uh, actually, I'm not sure about the Wall Street Journal. You can't do it with the New York Times. It's really a step backwards because that was one of the great things about in-app purchases was I could, yep. I could buy stuff without exiting my Kindle app. I could buy a book. Now I have to go back to the web, buy the book. Yeah. And then now, obviously, it. if you have a Kindle device or if you have a Kindle app on a different platform, it still works. Right. Uh, but this it's is just, only on iOS. Thank you, Apple. Yeah, it stinks. You yeah. dick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, well, it requires you to know. I mean, there's a, there's a website you can go to to buy Kindle books from an iOS device, but you have to know what that URL is. You can't. Oh, they don't put a button Amazon. anymore because they used to put a button. I should check on no, my it's Kindle. Gone. That's that's the that point. button's yeah. gone too because it used to would exit you yeah. out and go put you in Safari. So yeah, they, no, they they, they don't even want to do that because Apple would say new new new. You're bad. Well, that's what's gone, right? That's what they've removed. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and if they were to allow you to purchase the books from within the Kindle app, Apple, of course, would get a cut. And the argument right. is that you know 30%. the margins no are so margin. low on right. these things that they would not they would just lose money. Oh, you're right. I don't, I'm looking at the Kindle app on my iPad. There's no there's no it's longer gone. any buy a book at all. But you so know like now you they have that Apple UI that gets out of your way thing going for them. You know, so <laughs> maybe it's a right. <laughs> design consideration. Right? Wall Street Journal changed their app too because you used to be able to buy issues, individual issues, and so forth. They didn't want to give thirty yep. percent. To, uh, to Apple. And finally, uh, Mozilla announces that they're going to do a mobile operating system. Woohoo! Yay! It's called Boot, <laughs> Boot to Gecko. Um, I call it Boot to Irrelevance. <laughs> <laughs> why? 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 Um, no, well, I, we, I sort of get why they're doing it, but I also think that. Is this their response to Chrome? OS? That, we already have it. Yeah, we have it with Chrome. Um, right. Nobody was looking for this. Maybe. I don't even like Chrome OS. I've got this Chromebook. Yeah. I brought the Samsung Chromebook in, and it's yep. it's a netbook that only has a browser. Yeah, it's a Thank browser you. surrounded by hardware. I don't get it. It's okay. Right. It's fine. It's okay if that's all you want. Yeah, but it's it's heavier. Well, and they're, but they're also talking about it as a mobile phone operating system right. too. When you go into the thread on this it's like hey we want to compete with ios we want right. to compete with windows phone os they even called out windows phone os believe it or not that's because i don't think they mentioned a version number there yeah. but um... well despite the fact that they won't release an app on windows phone by the way <laughs> right right 
No, there's no Mozilla. Again, no but Firefox. again, the thing. No, and they no, no. they've explicitly said we're not doing it. Hmm. Right, Buta Gecko is going to use Android at its core, supposedly at least parts of the kernel and the drivers. <laughs> well, so what? aren't they going to be in the same legal hot water as everybody right. else? It too? is. It really is Chrome OS, isn't it? Wow. Yep. We're going to take a break. Come back. Uh, Paul Theron has his uh, his app picks and his uh, tips of the week and. How are we going to do this going forward? You want to you want to make Mary right. Jo do something in this last segment? I do want to make her do something. No, I don't. Yeah, know. <laughs> I want to. Mary Jo, could you do a little She's... dance? No, I think we got. I could do I could do app picks. I have sure. a Windows Phone Seven. I could do some phone picks. So Paul's going to do a Windows Weekly Tip of the Week, a Windows Seven app pick, a Windows Phone Seven app pick, a mobile app pick one, a mobile app pick two. He's yeah. he's taken all the air out of the room for you, Mary Jo. Do you, yes. want, yes. do you want to do an enterprise pick of the week? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I do. All right. That would be fun. Coming up, Mary Jo's <laughs> enterprise pick of the week. That is exciting. Excitement plus. What the hell has happened here? <laughs> <laughs> You've lost control, Paul. Uh, the master We're control. We're spiraling. What happened? <laughs> master control unit is now in charge. Our MMC snap-in of the week coming up in just a moment. But first... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's from the chat room. Thank you, guys. Uh, first, uh, visit to netflix.com slash twit. You know about Netflix. Of course, we've talked about Netflix for many years. I hope you're using Netflix streaming. Uh, I think some people were a little concerned about the Netflix price increase. No big deal because uh, seven ninety nine is still the best deal in entertainment if you just get the streaming. Forget the DVDs. I'm sure Netflix doesn't want me to say this, but forget the DVDs. Try the streaming because, you know, okay, yeah, you know, some some movies and TV shows are only available on DVD, but there's so much, thousands in here, tens of thousands of titles, there's so much in here. I never, every night I find something great, and a lot of times stuff I hadn't even thought of to watch. Great movies, great TV shows. I was watching Battlestar Galactica last night, love that. Uh, OSS 117, that was the movie that Paul recommended. You know, my daughter uh, loves French, so we watched that. She loved it. It was hysterical with Jean Dujardin as a, oh, a French awesome. 007. Oh, what a great movie. Lost in Rio. Well, you said, uh, actually, we watched the other one. Well, which the, was, the, uh, the Cairo. first one's the better one. The Cairo, yeah, the Cairo one? one? Yeah, we, that's the one we watched. Yep. Um, yep. Just all of this great stuff. Classics, brand new stuff, and more. And it's $7.99 a month. I mean, you can't beat that deal. But I got a better deal for you. 30 days free. If you go to Netflix.com slash twit. Now, if you're already a Netflix member and you already know about this, fine. But tell, do me a favor. Help Paul out. Help Mary Jo out. Help me out. Tell your friends. Tell Grandma. Tell people who, you know, just shout it out from the highest rooftop. Netflix.com slash twit. It's free for 30 days. Tell the world. And we will thank you for it. Netflix.com slash twit. It is the single best deal in home entertainment that's out there. You could watch it on your iPad, your iPhone. They don't have it yet on Windows Phone, but or do they? Android. They do. They do. It's on Windows Phone. They do. They do. Yep. Uh, of course, Roku Box, uh, Xbox 360, uh, you know, a lot of devices, Blu-ray Blu players now, a lot of TVs, all have Netflix. It's the, the gold standard of streaming. All right, Paul Theron. You know, there's, a, there's a new generation of Roku Boxes that I just know they came, just came out. out. Have you got one yet? I have one coming on the way. I don't have it yet. Good. Next week uh, we'll get our review because I I'm very curious myself. They've added Angry Birds. I yeah, know with the special controller. Cute. I'm not that excited about that, but I'm curious <laughs> if these boxes will support uh, closed captioning because Netflix has actually added closed captioning to a lot of content. They should. That really, they really. I hope really so. Should. I don't have anything that has it yet, although I guess it's right. available, you know, here or there. Let us get our Windows Weekly Tip of the Week, Mr. Paul Theron. So I wrote an article this week about consolidating email accounts. I think like a lot of people listening to this, I have way too many email accounts. Yes. In fact, I, I have 11 or more. Wow. I have 11 I could think of. Um, that's do they, too many. Do they all go to one <laughs> inbox? Or? No, but that's the thing. So the article is about the different ways you can consolidate um, email accounts. And, and you can do it up in the cloud by pulling an email into a central location. If you happen to use an application instead of the cloud, um, you can do it from like Outlook or Windows Live Mail or whatever, or on a, a phone-based uh, application as well. So the new version of Windows Phone Mango has a uh, unified inbox view. You can bring different uh, mailboxes all into the same application, which is kind of nice. 
Um, but one of the things that you know I, I did not write about, and I, I think I might write about in the future, is, is this week's tip, which is simply this: that depending on how you read your email, you can consolidate in different ways. And actually, even though I feel like using web these web interfaces is better in some ways, the one advantage to using an application in Windows, an email application, is that they have this uh, notion of unread mail that goes across all of your accounts. And that's actually really handy. So even if you're not consolidating these things up in the cloud, if you bring all of the email into one location, whether it's Microsoft Outlook or Windows Live Mail, one of the views you get is just unread mail. And you can look, you could just have it open to this sort of virtual folder, and you can just see a list of all your unread mail, no matter which account it's coming from. And that's actually kind of a nifty uh, way to do it. Yeah. So cool. Uh, it's uh, I guess what I'm saying is that if it, whether you're talking about Windows or Windows Phone coming with Mango, um, you do have this capability, and that's maybe uh, one way of instead of doing the work to consolidate them behind the scenes, you could just use a single client and access them all from the same place. Very cool. Very neat. Um, you know, Mary Jo, we'll save your enterprise. I know I want it's such a great <laughs> thing. I want to save it to the last bit so that it's like makes people stay tuned. Okay. Wow, I'm Paul, ready. I've got a great one. Crap. <laughs> Paul's Windows 7 app pick of the week. I, I see what's happening here. <laughs> so uh, Microsoft released an add-on for uh, Windows Photo Gallery this week that adds support for the raw, various raw uh, camera formats. And interestingly, it, it's not just for the Photo Gallery app. When you install this, it also adds raw support directly to Windows. Wow. Meaning that when you view raw photo files in Windows Explorer, they'll now come up with previews like normal, uh, well, I should say like JPEG photos or you know ping files or whatever. Um, I do not actually own a camera hmm. that supports a raw file format, and at least I don't think I do. But I do know just from uh, reading about it and talking to people about it that you know one of the confusing bits about raw is that they're you know those files are kind of hard to work with in the file system and uh, generally haven't worked very well in these low end. Uh, you know, photo editors or photo management suites, but now this adds that capability. And, and anybody who's so. serious about photography is going to use RAW these days. So that's a great, yeah, thing. that's a yep. great thing. Good. And it's just a plug-in. It's a codec pack that you download, basically. Yeah, it, they've had little things like this in the past. I guess this is a better version. It works with a 64-bit version of Windows 7, which I guess the nice. other one did not. Right. Um, yeah. So just a a nicer nicer way of doing it, I guess. And now for those of you who are Windows Phone developers. Well, so, but here's the deal. Uh, Microsoft released a release candidate version of Windows Phone 7.5. Mango. Uh, two developers, uh, which is the Mango version. The, the uh, it's version very, very close known to as the Mango. final version. Yeah. Yeah. So if you wanted to get this early, uh, you could pay $100 and become part of the developer program, and you would gain access to this. It's available to anyone who's in the developer program. So um, I haven't looked into this, but I know the Chevron guys have a developer unlock tool. Mm. That only costs nine dollars, mm. and that should be enough. Other than that, you'd have to find these files on your own because the, I guess the problem with the the official Microsoft stuff is that it is uh, through their Connect site, you know, connect.microsoft.com. So um, you would need to have access to that. I know I know you get that through the official channels, but I don't think you would get that uh, through Chevron. And actually, Raphael is writing me right now, so what he's saying is. It's not available yet through Chevron, but they're working on it. So uh, this may, in fact, be cheaper soon. But anyway, the point is simply that I've updated all of my phones now with Windows Phone 7.5 release candidate, and the process is a little time-consuming. But if you want to get that next version of the OS early, because God knows how long it's going to be before people with existing phones are going to be able to have it, um, this is a way to, uh, uh, to do that. Uh, very good news for people like me who happen to still use Macintoshes sometimes. Uh, you you taught me that loser, loser. I'm sorry. What you taught me that live <laughs> mesh. You taught me that live mesh works on uh, Macs, which surprised me. And I get what is it? Five gigs free. Yes. Uh, but and, the problem was when Lion came out, uh, Lion broke compatibility yeah. with the existing version. Not of anymore. Live mesh. Yeah, so the two mobile picks, mobile picks maybe isn't the greatest. These are sort of like cross-platform picks, but right. um, these are two Microsoft Cloud products picks. that work on Apple hardware. So the first one is a new version of Live Mesh for Mac OS X, which now does work in Lion. Um, it's only the photo synchronization stuff. It's not remote desktop. That's one of the features you get on the Windows side. But this is a little frustrating. I did click the link that said if you're on a Mac, download here, and it says, we're sorry, we, mm -hmm. we can't find that page. 
<laughs> nice. Okay, it is there. I'm, I'm using it. Um, it. But you know, I do I do synchronize several folders uh, between various PCs, and now you can synchronize them to a Mac as well. So it does work uh, if you can find it. Um, it's, there's a page in the there. search results, but it just won't come up. So uh, maybe it's just down right now. That's probably all it is. It's just down temporarily. Okay. Temporarily Sorry about down. That. Um, the other one is Microsoft also updated OneNote Mobile for iPhone. Um, there's no iPad version of OneNote, which is too bad, but there is a new version now of... This is great. I can't uh, wait to use yeah, this. this app. Yeah, Yeah, it's a good one. I mean, you know, as with Live Mesh, I mean, depending on where you're at in life, I mean, a lot of Mac users obviously use um, Dropbox, and then on the, uh, the note-taking side, I think a lot of iOS users are probably... Uh, fans of Evernote or whatever, but this looks more you know, and more like Evernote, good. which is kind of funny because Evernote was written to compete with OneNote, and now yeah. OneNote is kind of caught up in some ways. Yeah, somebody on Twitter was said, said, "Oh, you know, OneNote looks like a response to Evernote," you know, and it's like, well, actually, <laughs> OneNote way predates Evernote by yeah. several years, but yeah. okay, <laughs> Evernote was definitely written to kind of take off on OneNote's success. It was. Well, OneNote has always been very Microsoft specific, right? Right. So there's no version of OneNote, I don't believe, still for the Mac. But now here we have one for great. iOS. This and is great. Yeah, hopefully they'll do one for the iPad, and hopefully we'll see more of the Microsoft Office stuff uh, on iOS as well in the future. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, you've waited for it, you've pondered, you've pined, <laughs> you've demanded, and Mary Jo Foley will now give us her Enterprise Pick of the Week. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. Boy, that's galvanic. That is. It was on my end. I, I periodically lose my internet connection. Oh. That's not good. Yes. Well, here's no. some good news. <laughs> here's some good news. <laughs> it's time for Mary Jo Foley's Enterprise Pick of the Week. Well, actually, did did she yes, did she miss all my do. picks and tips? Maybe I should just do them all over again. Oh, Paul, shut up. No. <laughs> <laughs> I heard almost all of them actually. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> I was so excited to get to do a tip a pick of the week that at first I was thinking, oh, can I do two? Yes. Um, but but save one was, for next week. Okay, so. But you can okay, do two. I'll you can do your choice. Week. It's up to you. Okay. Well, I was going to do around. Windows Phone Mango, I was going to talk about how now with the Mango release, you're going to be able to have private and beta marketplace support on Mango, which is really interesting to enterprise users because a lot of them want to have apps that are just internally focused, internally used, um, or just test an app inside their own company, and they don't necessarily want it broadcast out to everyone. So this is a capability that's being introduced with Mango. It's not the ultimate private and beta marketplace that everybody was hoping it is was going to be, but it's a good start and at least shows Microsoft's thinking a little bit about the enterprise with Mango. There you but go. But my real enterprise tip of the week, yeah. my real enterprise tip of the week is System Center. Oh, God. Believe it or not. But listen, wait, Sorry. don't don't sleep under your desk, Leo. I'm, I'm gonna wide make awake. you like this. I'm pick. so excited. Okay. <laughs> System Center Configuration Manager 2012. And why am I picking this product? It's It didn't come out into a new beta this week or anything. In fact, the last beta release of it was in May. But I'm thinking you guys probably didn't talk about it on this show. And why is it interesting? Because... <laughs> Be, well, because it helps IT empower people to use devices and applications, they need to be productive while maintaining yes. corporate compliance and control. But... But <laughs> this release is coming later this year is going to support iPad. Oh. It's going to support iOS phones. It's going to support Symbian phones. So finally, Microsoft is going to be able to manage devices other than Windows Mobile with System Center configuration. That's manager. actually huge. So it's going to be pretty cool. Nowadays in the enterprise, uh, you know, it used to be you could dictate a phone. And that's what the company phone was, and they were mostly Blackberries, and you have yep. you had management tools for that. But now people bring their own phones; they get to choose. They want iPhones. I think that's huge. I think that's great. Uh, how did they it is. do? This? So is it a joint? It's coming out later this year. Is it a joint no, partnership no, it, with Apple? You know, it, I mean, it's, ex it's Exchange Active Sync. No. Is, uh, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got yeah. it. That's great. Yeah. But so, very interesting see, I, that I Microsoft wasn't, finally is supporting I was awake during the reviewer's workshop. I heard about this. You were. You were. <laughs> he just thought better about bringing it See, who it says here. System, Center, System Center can be fun, guys? Yes. It can be. Yes. 
Mary Jo Foley, <laughs> she's the greatest. All about Microsoft.com, her great ZDNet blog. We welcome her to the Windows Weekly Podcast. It's official now. She's going to have to come back every week. <laughs> and yes. Paul finally can go on vacation. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to have you, Mary Jo. It really is. Paul Therati is the editor-in-chief of the Super Site for Windows, winsupersite.com, uh, Windows IT Pro News uh, Editor, Penton Media Analyst, and, of course, the author of many great books, including Windows Phone Secrets and the soon-to-come Windows 8 Secrets. Thank Not you soon for enough. being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you, everybody, for joining us uh, and putting up with you know some of the glitches we're having in the new studio. But I think overall the, the the new look is great, and the chance to have you guys sitting around the round table is kind of fun. So thank you for being here. We appreciate it. We'll see you all next week.